kind of fight. Of course, uh, Mitch Green is a former New York Golden Gloves champion. He's known for his left jab. Uh, he has a, which is really his best punch. His left jab is a lot like yours, Larry, in that uh, his left jab is a punch, and he, he really delivers it pretty darn good. Miss Green got a lot of experience in working with me. He gained a lot of confidence and whatnot. I think it's going to be a good fight. I'll see what he can do. Let's go up to Frank Shane. He weighs in at 222 and a quarter pounds, hailing from Chicago. His career record, 15 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw with 13 knockouts. He drew with Joe Frazier. Let's make him welcome. Floyd Jumbo Cummings. Cummings. his opponent in the red corner he's wearing white drums trimmed with black he weighed in at 219 pounds he hails from new york city he's a former new york golden gloves champion his career record he's undefeated with 11 wins eight of these wins coming by the knockout route let's welcome mitch blood green 10 rounds Referee in the ring at this time, Larry Hazard, counting for the knockdowns at the bell, referee Paul Venti. All right, let's listen to Larry Hazard, the ref. All right, fellas, I want a clean fight. Keep your punches up at all times. No holding, no pushing. When I give you a command to break, I want a clean break. All right, so you heard what he had to say there. He's telling them about protecting themselves at all times. Larry, how much is this staring battle go, uh, going on here now? How much does that have an effect in the fight, or does it have any at all? It don't have anything to do with the opponent. It has something to do with yourself. You're psyching yourself. That's what I do. I change out of the good Larry Holmes into the mean Larry Holmes when I steer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Mitch Blood Green, handled by Carl King as manager. He'll present Bobby Lewis and Slim Robinson in that corner. Certainly a, a fine group. In the other corner, handling Jumbo Cummings, Primo La Casa, and Mickey Terriciola. Let's see, here we go now, round one just underway. You see the Don King logo there with the round one. Mitch Blood Green from New York, New York. Fighting about 15 minute drive from his hometown, Jumbo Cummings. Big guy, two big guys, really, Larry. Yes, it is. Mitch is very big, you know, and, and, and he got that very good left jab. Holds his hands kind of strange, though. You see the way he drops his hands, kind of flails away with the with the left but he does have that lightning left in the face yes he does he does that with inexperience bob if you notice mitch green he's still no kid yet and he slapped with the right hand and whatnot but i don't feel that he's gonna have too he shouldn't anyway have too much problem with jumbo coming because of the height i found working with jumbo Cummings uh in a couple exhibitions that he's very awkward, Bob, and uh, you can't hit him. He might look easy to hit, but he's not as easy to hit as it seems. Eight knockouts and 11 wins for Mitch Green. Excellent left. We've seen it so far. And as Larry pointed out, a bit awkward is the big guy, Jumbo Cummings. When you say a big guy, Mitch Green is <laughs> just as big. Jumbo's 222, and Mitch is uh, 219. But at that size, those heavy muscles that we talked about, if it goes down the line any, can really hurt, I would say, Jumbo more than anything. Jumbo again on the blue trunks. Midway through the first round here, coming up to the midway point anyway. And there you see that left again. He works behind the left jab, does Mitch Green. He, he, he throws that left, throws that left, and he has some awkward movement with his feet and then lets the right hand go. That's a lot of waste of energy, Bob, when you're just moving around, moving your body when you don't have to move. He just landed a good uppercut on Jumbo that time. Mitch is showing a lot of confidence, and uh, very, Mitch is a very good fighter, though. He got a lot of potential. The championship caliber, Larry? Well, if he get his head together, and I feel that he, he got a chance. He just got, he got a, as good a chance as any of them out there right now. I would put him in the bath and then see what we get. Two heavyweights. We're in round one. We're live from the Meadowlands. Bob Sheridan with Larry Holmes. The principal's in the ring. Mitch Green. I'm trying out. Building up some points here against Floyd Jumbo Cummings here in round one. 
See if you know the Jimbo got his hands laid up. Don't jab. Not too many of them are really getting inside. Yo, Rick. Bring him up. Bring him up. Come on. Larry has it. The referee says, keep him up, gentlemen. Yo, rhythm. Yo, rhythm. All right. Round one is by the boards. Pretty good round for Mitch Green. Again, the scoring, the five-point must supplementary to the round system as we go to the corner of Jumbo Cummings and we listen to what they say over there. You can listen and listen closely, Jack. Right. Listen, going your weight and get hit. Then you hit him with a left cup right cross. If you chose to jab right, right cross, left cross. Right. You're waiting. You're waiting too long. Who went? Who went around? He won. You wait to get hit. You're making him lead first. You lead. Right? Yeah. Left uppercut, right cross. Right. 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 Don't let him get ready. All right. We'll switch across the way now and see if we can pick up anything from Green's corner. Okay. And as we break over there, we just see that he's filled with plenty of energy. He's hardly puffing at all, Larry. First round, Bobby still kind of early yet. These guys get in pretty good shape. Again, it's Mitch Green in the white trunks. Floyd Jumbo Cummings in the blue trunks. We're live from the Netherlands on the Don King Sports and Entertainment Network. So glad that you can be with us. As you know, you'll see a championship fight on every one of Don King Sports and Entertainment Network telecast monthly. It's the only network that you can be sure when you tune in you will see a championship fight a great credit to the great promoter don king if you know the jumbo company is trying to work to the body of mid screen trying to take some of that steam out the, the pace is picked up this round too bob mid yeah. green just came out firing with jabs and right in you heard them in the corner larry say to jumbo uh jumbo wanted to know if he had won that round or not or did he said did i lose that round and uh uh, he didn't react too much when they said yes, but I think both of them are trying to pick up the pace a bit. But, of course, it's uh, Mitch Green that's setting the pace. Yes, he is. And I, a fighter should never worry about the first round because he got so many more to go. He should just try to get his thing in and be first of all time. Go rhythm. You uh, usually establish yourself in the first round, though. I know that you feel your opponent out, but... Even against a guy like Randy Cobb, you knew in the first round that you could do what you wanted. You found that out as the first round progressed. But you didn't try and do anything or get the impatient. And I think that's a, certainly a sign of a smart fighter. Yeah, you got to take your time. Things will come for you. All you have to do is just put your stuff together. But this is what Mitch Green is doing now. He's trying to put his punches together. He's stopping with that right hand, though. He's not really turning it over. And uh, he don't really have any power behind that. So this time, Jumbo really hasn't had much of an offense at all. He... He fights in little spurts, but nothing, no power there as he went to the body whatsoever. He hasn't really tried to tee off on a right hand yet, and Mitch Green it just taps away there with the left hand, but uh, uh, he scored with a couple of right hands, and uh, it's kind of, kind of an interesting fight the way he's going after him, sets everything up off the left jab, and then drops the right in there, sometimes one, two, and three times before he'll drop the right hand. See what Jumbo Cummings does, Bobby. He, he throws light punches to the body, and all of a sudden he'll come up with one hard punch, try to take you out of it. He tried to be a slick fighter, very cagey. Well, 15 and 3, not a bad record. When you're fighting heavyweights, as uh, you so well know, and all the heavyweight fighters know it can end in hour. He does the right hand, and he has hurt Mitch Green. He really tagged him, just like you said, Larry. Well, this is what I say. He throws light punches, and all of a sudden he comes up with a good punch. Don't forget, Jumbo Cummings been in there with Joe Frazier, and he knows what he's doing, you know, so he's trying to get Miss Green to, to commit himself, and now the punches are starting to take a toll on Miss Green. That one really surprised Miss Green. Mitch uh, uh, kind of wants to be ignited here as we come into the close of round two. Oh, the right hand scores at the bell again, Larry. I see what you mean. I was looking and imagining the fact as we go to the corner of Mitch Green that by golly, Jumbo wasn't doing anything. And you said, watch out, he's caging. Just as you said it, he did it. Now listen, huh? Yes, he is. Now listen to what I'm saying. That, uh, the jab has got to work. He throws light punches all of a sudden, just comes back with it. Upper body this Bill Present, who also blood. works in your corner, talking to Mitch Green. You didn't, have, no, you didn't have the rhythm right there. Well, Bill, what I'm saying. Uh, Mitch Green got good people in the corner with Bobby Lewis and Bill Present. Bill Present is one of the best cut men in the world that I consider because he works with me. But uh, 
Green, hold your head up. I think Mitch Green got to get himself together. Let's watch the replay, Bob. Comes follows up on the left. We'll show you the real big heavy one now. Hey. Bobby Louis just told Mitch, do not stand in the position to move out come on, in circle. So if you get flat foot, Jumbo come, got a chance to come on. Well, by those two big shots in the second round, he'd almost have to give that round to come. And so we get a dead even fight again as we go to round three. And Mitch Green, who has a draw on his otherwise perfect record, he's undefeated with eight knockouts, found out he's got to, as we mentioned in the first round, watch what he does with those hands. Keep that left hand up there to protect himself against that wild right hand. Yes, he should. He should stay on the outside and use the jab, get this guy drunk, then go in for it. When Larry says drunk, he means hit him with punches. He's not talking about drinking. <laughs> I got to explain that to everybody, Larry. <laughs> get him set up with the punches and then follow up. Now, see, Mitch is going inside now. He should stay on the outside and take away with that jab, just like he's doing now. And not that Jumbo coming out of the corner, and then he'll be able to land that right hand. But again, you got to watch Jumbo coming because he's very cagey. He come back with that right hand, which he just took a right hand from uh, Mitch Green. There's that uppercut again that gets through, and there's a series of punches. Larry has it, warns Mitch Green about hanging on and hitting. And Mitch Green just got hit with a right hand also. There was a trade punch that time. These guys are putting on a good show, Bob. These uh, Jumbo coming, showing no fear, and Mitch is showing no fear, so they got a good fight here. And the crowd in attendance, the very appreciative boxing fans. This is the first in a series of fights on the Don King Sports and Entertainment Network that will be coming to you live from the Meadowlands. And don't forget, coming up, we've got the Cruiserweight Championship fight. S.T. Gordon and Jesse Burnett. See, Mitch got to be careful because he's, he's going in too close. He should peck away with that left jab in the, while he got Jumbo in the corner and work off. Now he's getting a little bit careless. One thing, uh, Larry, that I picked up here early going, you think Green would be better off if he did a little sideways movement? Everything is straight on. There's no, no sideways, no circling at all. He just comes, the two of them are separating. Now watch them come right back together again. There's no movement to the side. It seems like if he took a quick shuffle step off to the right and then try to drop that right hand over the left, he'd be in good shape. But evidently they're not training him that way. This is what Bobby Lewis told him. He says, stay off on the side, you know. Don't stand there. And Mitch is not listening. He's right in front of the guy. He should be off on the side, sticking and using that jab. As you notice, Jumbo just threw an overhand right to try to take his head off. And those punches shouldn't land. They shouldn't be able to hit Mitch because he should be on the outside. Closing seconds now. 20 seconds remaining in round three. Scheduled 10 round heavyweight division. And a good fight to this point. This is kind of a tough round to score. Green more the aggressive, scoring, I suppose, a few more punches as round three ends. WBC featherweight championship, Juan Laporte versus Ruben Castillo. Twelve rounds, that'll be. Laporte and Castillo. You know, Juan Laporte, Day, he's a... He's a great fighter, Bob, and uh, he just won that title. He wants to keep it. Really want to prove himself. WBC featherweight championship, Juan Laporte, Ruben Castillo. That'll be coming to you from San Juan, Puerto Rico. We'll go to the corner of Mitch Green here. Finish with the left hook. You got to finish with the left hook. Larry, how about these guys who get off the stool in between rounds? Uh, do you go for that? I can't yeah, recall. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, Bob, I go for it. You know, it all depends how I feel. If I feel that I have a real hard fight, I would sit on the stool and get all the energy, all the rest that I can get. But these guys, uh, this feels good. All right, here we go. Round four, Bob Sheridan with the heavyweight champ, Larry Holmes, doing commentary here. You've got Mitch Green in the white trunks, Floyd Jumbo Cummings in the blue trunks. Fourth round, five-point scoring system, which is supplementary to the by-round scoring system here in the state of New Jersey. The judges, three judges, do all the scoring. The referee controls the fight, but has no say in the scoring. Kind of a seesaw battle. I had Green winning the first and third rounds, coming winning the second round. Jumbo Cummings now is starting to throw harder punches, Bob. He just landed a good body punch with a right hand over that block, but Mitch Green came back with two good left jabs. At the point that 
Jumbo got through there, it seemed like Green was waiting for something to happen. I don't think that's his style at all. I don't think he should, I don't think he should wait on this guy at all. Miss Green cannot walk in there because Jumbo's throwing those left uppercuts and they're very effective. Who is the tougher guy for you to spar with, Larry? I think uh, Jumbo was because of his awkwardness. Miss Green is a stand-up boxer, and I don't have problems with too many stand-up boxers. But Mitch, Mitch is really teeing off on Jumbo now. They just landed some good punches. Jumbo's in the corner. That's a place he don't want to be with Miss Green. In that series, there was at least two real good shots to the chin. Jumbo takes a pretty good shot, doesn't he, Larry? Yes, he does. He takes a very good shot. Mitch, Mitch Green takes a good shot also. I don't know what that was. Larry has it looked at him and said, hey, what are you doing there? This is football. Jumbo, Jumbo played a little bit of football, too. Yeah, he lift weights, too. That's probably what he thought he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch getting hit with good punches inside this line. Let's show you, we, Don King always puts on a good show on Don King Sports and Entertainment Network, Bob. I'm glad to be here in the middle Land with him. That's what I'd like to see him do more, is slide around and be lightning with that left hand by the time Jumbo comes back, not be there. This is what he got to do, Bob. He got to stay on the outside and use that jab and make... Uh, Jumbo coming dizzy a little bit. Have him follow him. I wouldn't suggest circling to the left, though. He could, could get into one of those right hands and, and it would be going right into the power. If I were him, I'd be circling around towards my right. Try to set up my own left hook and follow with the right. Do you think about those things, though, uh, at all? Oh, yeah. You, you think about that. You don't want to go to a guy's power. I always go both sides. Like, when I fought Jerry Cooney, I didn't want to go to my right because it's that going into his left. And so I kept him going. If I go into my right, it's only a little bit. All right. Round four by the boards. Another good round. Let's go take a look into the locker room of S.D. Gordon. There he is in there, the cruiserweight champion of the world. Is he, is he going to fight tonight? <laughs> He's, talk to us, S.D. Can you hear us at all? Probably can't hear us, Bobby. <laughs> Seemed like he's cool, really relaxed and whatnot. But hey, he got a fight. I don't know why he got his tie on. Well, this I, man he got a fight. He just said, "Have all that off." <laughs> it's the first time I've gone in there and, and, and gone into the room and had seen a fellow uh, dressed up in a tuxedo. <laughs> uh, he looks good. All right, we've got a good one going here too. Mitch Green, Floyd Jumbo Cummings. We're in the corner now with Jumbo. Let's see if we can pick up what they're saying there. Okay, Come on. All right, coming up round five, schedule 410 in the heavyweight division, Mitch Blood Green in the white trunks, Floyd Jumbo Cummings in the blue trunks. You never took a middle name as a fighter. You were known as the Eastern Assassin all the way through, but it was just Larry Holmes. Yeah, that's the name my mother gave me, and I want to stick by her, you know, and I asked her before they call, start calling me Eastern Assassin, would she mind if they called me the Eastern Assassin, because she gave me that name, and I want to hang on your own. Your mother gave you that? I never knew that. Larry Holmes. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Sheridan here with the heavyweight champ, Larry Holmes. So glad you can be with us on the Don King Sports yeah. and Entertainment Network. Mitch got to watch on overhand and right. He just got hit with an overhand and right by Jumbo. He just Run him off down bouncing off of Mitch like that. He got to use that jab, keep that left hand up a little bit higher. Well, he carries that left so low. You were one of the few guys, you and Ali, that could get away with that because you just had the lightning. He's quick, but he doesn't have the kind of hand speed that uh, that you had, especially at this stage in his career. For the experience, Bob, you know, keep your hands down low. Come with quickness, and it comes with the experience. And uh, if you notice later in my career, now my hands are zoomed up a little higher now because I'm not as quick as I used to be. Give me that hook down in the screen. Mitch Green trying to tee off on Jumbo. He shouldn't get caught in the corner over there. He's going to get himself in big trouble. Right now, Green is just sort of measuring him. Jumbo standing in the corner. A lot of those punches not not landing, but those jabs are getting in, and the points are being taken away from Jumbo because he is laying in the corner. 
down. Come on, blood. Get down. Get down. Pick it inside. Nothing happening blood. inside here at all in the infighting. There's a shot there, uppercut, and followed right blood. back by an uppercut by Mitch Green. Come on, blood. Don't wait for him. Jumbo, I see what you mean there. He he's awkward, but he does have. He's a guy that you have to keep an eye on. That's for sure. You can't can't uh, fall asleep with him at all. No. If you notice, Miss Green here is all down in his face. Some of it is running in his eyes. That's a bad place for his hair to be. Uh, because hair caused cuts. And Miss Green has in his front of his eyes. They should make him cut that hair up. If you notice, uh, Jumbo come and lost his mouthpiece. But, Bob. Yes, he did. Closing seconds now of round five. The scheduled ten rounder. Miss Green left eye is kind of swollen now too, Bob, from no moving here and right. And that hair also being there over at the top of the eye. You had to give him advice and tell him to get his hair cut for these fights anyway, yeah. huh? Yeah, Bob, he should get that hair off his eyes. Get it cut. All right, round five. Another pretty good round, though. Green continues to build up the points, though, Larry. Yes, Green, I got Green ahead. I got him ahead, ahead of, by a couple rounds, but he's still taking punches that he shouldn't take. You call me in. Right, Step to this sucker. Step to this sucker and you have no problem. All right. We're in the corner now with Mitch Green. You lose you. Bill Present. You okay? Bobby Lewis in there. Talk to him. Right? Your blood, blood, listen to me, man. Captain, you lose. You're getting your hands off. All you got to do when you get up, get close to you. Wait a minute. You let him rest. Don't let him rest on you. Where am I going into now? Don't let him rest on you. All right? Very good. Look at here. Don't let him rest on you. Blood. Blood, listen. Don't let him rest on you. When you get close, run your hands around in his body. Beat him around the body. You know the shot where we reach around and hit around in the spleen? Go ahead. Hit him around in the spleen around the body. Very organized corner. That's your same corner, too. The same people that work with you. Yeah, well, I got one of the guys anyway in there. Bill Present, he works with me. But uh, Bobby Lewis, he don't work with me. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got a very organized corner there. Bobby Lewis, very experienced in a corner. As you come up to round six here. Don't let him rip, blood. Big thing that they yelled in the corner there was, don't let him rest, Blood. And talk to Mitch Green and say, hey, keep going with that left. That way you won't be a victim of that wild right hand of Jumbo. Just keep that left going. When you hear them say, now three, they wanted to follow up with a series of punches. One, two, three. There you are. Don't let him rest. There's a good right hand. Get through that time. Mitch is starting to land good punches, Bob, on Jumbo. But he got to be careful there because Jumbo is throwing punches and he's throwing them from any way he possibly can throw them. Jumbo's a slick though. He picks a lot of them off. Some of them, as you watch the monitor here and you folks watch at home, look like they're pretty good shots, but he's picking them off of the hand. Not to be mistaken by the fact that Mitch Green is definitely getting more leather through there. Oh, yeah. Rip it underneath there again, blood. Let him rip down, blood. Don't let him rip. Left hand coming in his mouth. Jumbo Cummings. Ooh, a right hand scores. Green is able to absorb it, though. This is what I'm talking about. Mitch just gets lazy every now and then. He drops his hand. And Jumbo Cummings comes over there with a right. Don't wait for him, blood. And Jumbo throws body punches just to get Mitch to drop his hand. And then all of a sudden, he comes over with a right. Step to him, bro. Step right to him. Step right to him. 13 knockouts and his 15 wins for Jumbo Cummings. That's a high ratio of knockouts for fights. And you can see Step where they right come from because he can be just coasting along with Mitch Green ahead. And all of a sudden, like a bolt out of the blue, Step comes right that wild right hand. Right behind you, Jeff. A guy his size and as strong and muscular as he is, you got to figure there's a lot of power when he does land it. He's not your classic fighter at all, at, at all, really. As Larry described him, he is awkward, but he's slick. Step right to him, bro. Step right to him. Mitch has got here with two good punches in there, Bob. And this is what he, he cannot get lazy in there. He got to be on top. He got to know what he's doing at all times. This guy is a good puncher. With the belt, the muscles that he got, you can tell he can punch. 
three good series that time of one, two punches. Jumbo keeps taking that mouthpiece out. That's bad for two things. Not only can you get a broken jaw or broken teeth, but that mouthpiece helps absorb some of the flow when you are here. Yes, that cuts up your inside the mouth, Bob, when you don't have your mouthpiece in. And Jimbo, I'm expecting his mouth to be all cut up inside, not surprised. But he's doing that, thinking that he can get more air, but if he learns how to use that mouthpiece, he can get just as much air. All right, round six is history. We go over to the corner now of Jumbo Cummings. Be interested to hear what they have to say there. He's really fatigued, as you can see. Huh? A little bit of the action from the round. That was that series of three flurries that Mitch Green had, and he scored about three good punches in that series. See, Jumbo know what he's doing now, Bobby. When Mitch throw the combination, right away Jumbo ties him up. Jumbo just said he got to fight all the, all the way now. Let's see if he can do that. Well, he's got to really pick up the pace because I have him, I don't know if you would agree totally, but as we go to round seven here, I have Cummings only winning one round. Well, I don't give him too many more than that, Bob. I don't know if I give him that, but uh, let's see what happens. We're not the judges, and I see they, they can score a fight. At least they say they can. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one thing, whether they can or they can't, they will be. Yeah. <laughs> Green, uh, the reason why I have him so far up front is because he just continued to throw a lot of punches. He's landed many more punches, although some of the heavier blows in the fight have been landed by Jumbo Cummings, especially back there in round two where the surprise right hand came from no place and really tagged, and I thought it had Green stunned. Uh, in the fourth round, he nailed him again, but Green really absorbed the punch extremely well. We're in round seven, scheduled for ten. Jumbo now is not doing anything, he's just taking jabs. Say he was going to fight a little harder this round, Bob, but he hasn't shown no evidence of that. Well, this is the stage, too, Larry, as we've mentioned before. When you see a guy with those heavy, thick muscles, fatigue begins to set in around the sixth or seventh round. He was really sucking wind there in between rounds. And here in the seventh round, he's just really not doing anything. You know, big guys, you know, with all that bulk and that, the weight, don't really have the stamina to go. Mitch Green has a body that he could put on a little bit of weight. He's got the long muscles, and he's not too bulky. He's really slender, and he still weighs 219. So he's a he's going to be a good prospect. He's got a little bit more learning to do, as Larry pointed out. He's got to learn to keep that left hand a bit higher, and he's got to learn to circle a bit more, get a little bit more movement on the feet. I think Mitch Green got a good weight now, Bob, because if he gained too much weight, he's going to lose stamina. Mm -hmm. And you know, like George Foreman, all those big guys, like Jerry Cooney, they didn't, they didn't have the stamina, really. One of the real big guys that you fought that had those heavy sort of muscles and tall and a lot of weight was Kenny Norton. And there's a guy that, well, of course, for that fight, it was a title shot that time for both of you. And uh, it was an unbelievable contest. That's perhaps the best fight that I've ever had the pleasure of calling. Kenny Norton four guys that, uh, he four guys hard that he didn't like. Me, he didn't like me, he didn't like Ali. And so, you know, he, he really pushed himself to do what a lot of people didn't really expect him to do. Closing seconds out, round seven, it's all over. Another pretty good round for Mitch Green. We're going to try and get over to the corner, uh, rather the locker room, where Jesse Burnett is. Mouthy. We'll switch over there. Plus. Surprised you one night too, Larry, didn't he? No, not really. <laughs> you thought he had that kind of power, did you? <laughs> you surprised him back in a hurry, though. <laughs> of course, I'm referring to the time that Larry 
was cruising along and out of no place all of a sudden he was knocked down but showing the true heart of a champion that the great champ Larry Holmes is and not just because he's sitting here getting off the canvas three or four times in his career to knock out his opponents which is really the true measurement of a great champion anybody can go when things are going good and right now things are going good for Mitch Green in here against Floyd Jumbo Cummings get in closer step in with it step in with it Beat him as he coming. Jumbo's landed a good uppercut on Mitch that time. About part of it was blocked, though. He can't stay there. He got to stay busy. That's what he got to do. That's what he's doing. Stay busy. Best exchange of the fight. We'll let you watch it. Mitch just trying to pour it on, coming right at him. Well, he poured a little bit over here on the side, Bob. I got wet. <laughs> you never want to wear a white tuxedo at ringside, I'll tell you that. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Let's go, Brian. Let's go. Referee Larry Hazlitt, third man in the ring, telling the fellows to watch their heads. You'd hate to see a fight that's cruising along, going very, very well to be ended by a, a headbutt that could end the fight, cause a disqualification. See what Mitch did, he just threw a lot of punches. Now he's trying to rest a little bit, but he's resting wrong. He should be on the outside, circling a little bit, just taking his time. Now he's resting, they're not throwing it. Both guys are just taking it easy. You can't punch yourself out in the fight. Especially when you got a couple rounds to go. Jumbo's doing really nothing right now. He's just sort of hanging around there, waiting for Mitch Green to come at him, and as he waits for him, Mitch Green obliges by coming at him. Neither one of these fighters uh, has real good foot movement, side to side movement at all. It's causing Cummings uh, trouble because he's being hit a lot. For him, he should be circling around to his left. The other guy, Mitch Green, should be circling away from the right hand power. Well, Cummings this. took his mouthpiece out again, Bobby threw down on He's going to get popped one time like that. <laughs> I'm surprised that Larry Hazard has stopped him from doing that. A lot of places, they really don't like you taking that mouthpiece out. If he gets knocked out, that's one thing, but they want it in there. And the purpose, of course, is twofold. One, to absorb the blow and protect the teeth. I don't think Larry has a seen this. Put them together. Put them together. Taken out because his mouth is still lays on the campus. That's right. And uh, he hasn't hey, taken the throw it on the side yet. Do it again. Do it again, blood. That was round eight. It's all over. And again, Mitch Green just continues to pile up the old points. Blood. This guy can't even read, blood. This, this guy it cannot do nothing. They asked me for right. penicillin today. You gotta listen. Him. Oh, you, letting guy, rest on you. you letting him rest. Don't let this guy rest on you. Right. Don't let this guy get no rest. I'm going to replay for you to show you the real flurry, the fast flurry that took place. This is some of the best action in the fight. Slowed down, it doesn't look that dramatic, but when it was happening, it all happened in a hurry. And Mitch Green landing most of the punches. Different angle of it. And you can see the amount of shots that Mitch Green is landing around that head and also to the body of Floyd Jumbo Cummings. In the corner of Jumbo, and he's really, really trying to suck the wind in. That's why, of course, Larry's spitting that mouthpiece out. Yes, it is. All right, here we go. Round nine, scheduled for ten. As far as I can see, Jumbo would have to knock out Mitch Green to win this one, and I don't know if he has the stamina to do it. Mitch Green needs a few more of those flurries that we showed you the replay of in between rounds, and he has this one pretty much sewed up. Of course, my scoring is unofficial. That's where we're coming to you from. There you are, there you are, blood. Jumbo going to the body and then gets wild with the left hand. Gets through with the light left that time, but his punches just haven't really taken a toll on Mitch at all. He's hit Mitch twice with two 
especially back in the second round, a good right hand, and again in the fourth round, and it just didn't do anything to him at all. And I would say that was as good a shot as he could th he can throw. Here in the ninth round, it's highly unlikely he'd be hurt by Mitch Green. Mitch Green goes all out, Bob, and this is what I like about him. He gives it all he got every round, and his jumbo's coming to start to take it. Double stick, that left. Double stick. It. Remember Double another thing: neither fighter has been down, neither fighter has really been visibly shaken. But if Jumbo stays in the corner, he's going to be shaking pretty soon. I think Mitch hurt him with a good right hand, straight right hand to the body. Jumbo fell back in the corner. Upper body movement. Coming up to 120 remaining in round nine. I see what you mean now. Again, you see him arranging his hair. You can get tagged while you're doing that. You don't want those kind of distractions. Ooh, there's a right hand. Let's that's see if he can follow up. That's what we're talking about, Bob. Moving his hair. When he moves his hair, he got hit with a right hand over it. And he can't, he can't stay still. He's kind of shaking up now. Jumbo He's got him. Shaking up. The heavier blows in this fight have been landed by Jumbo, but he hasn't been able to follow up. On that pony. On that pony. See, Mitch is getting hit with jab, so he's still, you can still see that. He's not all the way back. He's not all the way back for yeah. sure. He's hurt. He's Jumbo hurt should by. really attack now. Jumbo never should be waiting like this. He's giving his man a chance to recuperate. Now his... Here you are, stick it. Jumbo's going all the way out too with that right hand. He's not really sure if Mitch is hurt or not. Mitch is, is, is getting kind of sloppy at this stage here. He's He's been tagged hard. There's no question about it, and it took a big effect. You see him continually go pushing his hair back. As Larry pointed out when he first saw him, he should do something about that hair. Should Round get, nine. He should get a ball head, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want you calling him the acorn, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give that round to Cummings to see if we can even it up a bit here, but it's going to take more than that one for him to win. Listen to me. You know what I want. Watch the good shot. We're going to show you the replay of it. Bang! And you see, he really has his legs rubberized here, but Jumbo just doesn't really follow up on it. Here's the other angle of it. It really takes a toll on him, but it just, he stops there. He doesn't really pour it on. He should have, because he came back and landed two or three left jabs, real good left jab, and Mitch didn't even do anything. Like, Mitch was just sitting there, like, in the standing there, like, in the, he was in a daze. Huh? Up, right? Let's go. Get up. Get up. Plus. All right, we're coming up to the 10th and final round of the contest. <laughs> Mitch Green trying to stay away a bit. Floyd Jumbo Cummings looking for the opportunity to land another right hand, but he's got to do something because we have it unofficially a green way out in front in the fight. What Bobby Lewis telling Mitch to do is stay on the outside. He won the fight, so don't take any chances. Just stay on the outside. Get on that pony. I need that pony, blood. I need that pony. This is when it uh, is very important to use the head as well as the fist. They know in the corner that they've got the fight won. All he's got to do is just continue to let the left hand go out there and stay away from his man. Need that pony. Now stick him, now double stick. Right, there you are. He'll be there. You hear that's Bobby Lewis in the corner get saying, get on the pony. That means get on your horses and get out of there. Halfway the through round 10. Right, use the whip while you're on the pony. Thing that surprised me, I know he's fatigued, but Jumbo really hasn't attacked as much as I thought he would, although he landed in the right hand there. Yeah, because Mitch is on the outside and staying away from him. Jumbo got to work his way in. 
shit. But he got to work his way in a little fast. He got to go for broke if he want to win this fight. I only give him about three rounds. Right, 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 right. Ride the pony block with a stick. With a stick. With a stick. With a stick. Right, ride the pony now. Ride the pony, baby. Ride it. Ride it, baby. That's the corner. You hear them keep yelling, ride the pony. They just want him to stay away. He's got enough points. There's some movement there. Ride the pony, blood. Ride. It's sloppy movement because he's fatigued. That's what he should be doing, sticking and moving. Scored a right hand because of the movement, Larry. That movement like that brings you, gives you that rhythm. And that's what you need. You need rhythm when you're back. I always know when you're really getting ready to go after a guy because you, uh, I can just see it in your eyes and your hands start moving and you know that you're moving in for the kill. Coming up to 10 seconds remaining. When I do that, Bob, I be getting tired of the guy, so I be going and take him out. <laughs> and you can do it too. You know, who can say anything different? This fight's all over. A good fight for Mitch Green. We'll wait for the official scoring on it. A real tough fight all the way. And I'd say a good uh, boxing show for Mitch Green. We were able to see a couple of things he needs to do, Larry. And, uh, of course, Jumbo, uh, his record, uh, we're assuming that they're going to give Green the decision here. And I don't see how it would go any other way. But stranger things have happened. So before I say too much more and get myself <laughs> in real trouble, I better wait for the official announcement here. Have you been wrong before, Bob? <laughs> well, once, I think. <laughs> I, I've never been wrong myself. <laughs> <laughs> At least I won't admit that anyway. Coming up, of course, the Cruiserweight Championship of the World, S.T. Gordon and Jesse Burnett. We're waiting for the official scoring here. We're also going to have a six-round middleweight fight for you, James Dorsey and Earl Ayers. Yes, Two young middleweights. Dorsey is 3-0, and, and Earl Ayers, his professional debut. So we've got a lot of boxing before this evening's over on the Don King Sports and Entertainment Network. Larry Holmes and myself are glad that you're here. It's okay. Just waiting for that decision. Again, it's the five-point supplementary scoring system to the round system. All right, let's go up to the ring announcer for the official decision. The winner by unanimous decision, Mitchell Blood Green. No surprise to us, Mitchell Blood Green, the winner on a unanimous decision. His record moves to 12 and 0. Floyd Jumbo Cummings, his record drops to 15 and 4. We're going to be talking to Greg Page very shortly. Of course, Greg Page is coming off a big win over Frazier last week. And, uh, Greg, we're going to be working with this camera over here, so uh, I know the fans want to get a close look at you. Tell me a little bit about that contest you had last week. Well, it was a very good fight.